Hello, I'm Roger. This is Ellie. Today we're going to talk about books. Not just any kind of book, but books specifically about Chinese antique furniture. Now, I have a lot of books about Chinese antique furniture. Let me show you what I mean. Now, that's not all of them. It's many of the English language ones, not so many of the Chinese language ones, and definitely none of the other books I own about other Chinese arts and antiquities. So it's not an easy task to pick out just a few of them. Many of them overlap. Some are expert level and some are beginner's level. Nevertheless, we're going to pick out five of them that I think you'll find interesting. And so as to not have these videos run on for too long, I'll split them up into separate videos and that'll be provided in the playlist below. Oh, and if you make it to the end of the series, I'll introduce you to one of the most expensive books about Chinese antique furniture, a book that'll set you back a cool 30,000 US dollars. So without further ado, let's talk about books about Chinese antique furniture. So this book is called Old China New Style Antique Furniture and Accessories 1780 to 1930. Honestly, I have to say this book is terrible. And I mean no disrespect to its authors, but from an educational or scholarly perspective, it's pretty bad. So the million dollar question is, why would I recommend such a horrible book? Hang in there with me for a moment and you'll see shortly why. Let me introduce the authors first. Now, this was an expat couple living in Hong Kong in the 90s. There was a wave of these kind of books at that time written by foreigners who caught the antiques bug. The husband was a business journalist and later a news anchor for CNBC Asia, and the wife worked at international schools. They left Hong Kong in 97, around the time of the handover, which was the first wave of people migrating away from Hong Kong. They moved to New York, where they opened up a shop called the Han Horse, which sold Chinese antiques and was located in Manhattan's snooty Upper East Side. They published the first version of the book in 2000 and called it Chinese Country Antique Vernacular Furniture and Accessories. The book will cost you anywhere from $10 to $50, depending on the seller. Then they republished it again in 2002, with the same name, but a different cover. In 2005-ish, they republished it once more under the name Old China New Style Antique Furniture and Accessories, which added a few fluff photos of interiors. And finally, they republished it one more time in 2009 under the original name of Chinese Country Antiques Vernacular Furniture and Accessories, but again with a different cover photo. Confused yet? I was. Now the pieces in this book are not exactly the same each time it was republished. Essentially what they were doing was publishing a new sales catalog. So even though it's pretty much the same book each time, there are some differences. And I want to point out that yes, this book is basically a glorified sales catalog. It's a brochure. Outside of that, there is very little useful information in the book. They seem to have no idea what these pieces are, no idea what region they come from, and no idea what they were used for. They don't know which period the pieces are from, or really even if they're antiques or reproductions. Essentially, they took whatever little information their buying agent gave them, added photos, and put it in print. Oh, and the crazy prices. Lots of times they included these crazy suggested retail prices. So for example, if you wanted to buy XXX, then you need to spend about XXX. The photos are very nice though, although everything is terribly over restored in that glossy style that they loved in Zhuhai Zhongshan in the late 90s and early 2000s, which is where most of these pieces came from. They even made an attempt at trying to talk about fakes and restorations in the beginning of several of the books, although again, it is not very insightful or useful information. Now, why would I recommend such an absolutely terrible book? Drum roll, please. It's a useful book because, ironically, they managed to create an almost perfect snapshot of exactly the sort of somewhat average pieces that were bought by wholesalers and retailers from the south of China in the early 2000s. Did you notice I said average pieces? I said that because we're not talking about items in rare hardwoods like Huang Hua Li. So these books document what was roughly the beginning of an era in which those sort of items began flooding into Western markets around the world. And that's what makes this book so useful. It offers a very clean and clear record of that, an almost perfect snapshot. 
If you were a wholesaler or a retailer during that time, you'll recognize everything in the book immediately. In fact, you won't need this book because you've lived it. I don't need this book. But for others, it could be a very handy reference guide. Let's say you own a small shop. From time to time, you get antique looking items that come in. You think maybe they're Chinese, but you're not sure. You have no idea. Perhaps they're Japanese or Korean or Indonesian. So how would you know if they're Chinese or not? One can simply look in the book. If it's not in these books, then it's probably not Chinese. And this applies to individuals or collectors as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a shop owner. So this book is ironically very useful for those who don't have a basic understanding of what the average Chinese piece looks like, especially provincial items. And again, this book won't be useful if you're talking about higher end items in hardwoods or precious materials, scholar objects, stone, these sort of things. But for everything else, especially in the average end, very, very useful. I'll put the links for these books in the description below. And thanks to Ellie, who sits patiently while I ramble on and on. Yeah, you're a good girl.